All right, guys, I am packing for a 10 day spring bear hunt coming up here pretty quick. So I figured I would toss together a nice gear dump video for you. Uh, I'm going to do my best to kind of just get to the point and only go over kind of foundational pieces of gear, uh, not get too far into the weeds with the little miscellaneous things. So let's jump right in. As you can see in front of me, I have my backpack. It's already kind of loaded up. This is the XO Mountain Gear K4, and this is the 7200 bag. I have it outfitted with two hip belt pockets and the Nalgene pocket, which I love. It's a very simple feature, but I think they nailed it. Um, the pocket's stiff. You slide your bottle in, it's snug. It's not flopping around everywhere. I think out of all the backpack manufacturers, they, they definitely nailed uh, the Nalgene holder. Simple feature, but it's awesome. Um, these nice big side pockets on both sides. I'll try to kind of show you, the pack's loaded, but you got these full side zips here, both sides of the pack, uh, great for spotting scope. Um, I also run the Peaks trekking poles that break down into like a Z. They also fit in the side here. I got my Seek Outside uh, center pole for my shelter in the side, zipped away, which is nice. And then this other side here, I can put my spotting scope in, uh, my tarp. There's plenty of room in these side pockets. Then the front here is outfitted with a nice stretchy pocket. I currently have my solar panel in there, but it's also a great spot to store like three liter bladders of water that are for quick access and whatnot. And then you got your lid, very simple, straightforward lid. And then again, you know, these packs, the frame is super easy to get to. A couple side clips come undone, pop the bag off the frame, you're right on your meat shelf. So. Anyway, um, trying to be quick here, but these packs are awesome. I've been using these packs since the K2. I've never had an issue, no broken frame, no, no messed up stitching. I've never had a failure with these backpacks. So very quality um, company in my opinion. So if you're in the market for a pack, I, I would highly recommend XL Mountain Gear. I'll get this thing off the table real quick. All right, let's go, let's talk about boots. So uh, if you've been watching my channel for the last couple years, I've been wearing Crispy for several years now. Um, these particular boots are the um, Brickstall Mountain GTXs. They're in a Flex 3 rating. Uh, personally, I love these boots. They're stiff enough for some good support, hiking up steep, nasty shale, but they also have enough flexibility that I feel like I can be nimble, you know, moving through the timber and whatnot. So. If you're gonna buy like one pair of boots to do it all, I would highly suggest these boots. Um, if you're a guy that can justify multiple pairs of boots, I would recommend these as like a spring bear, um, early October into November boot. And then I would recommend the Laponia for like an August high country archery mule deer hunt. And then like September archery elk, those boots are awesome as well. That was my first pair of Krispies. I had the Laponia, original Laponias, and I had those for four years. Um, love those boots. The only downside to those is the sole uh, wore off after four years of use. They have released a couple new sets of Laponia since then, and I believe they've uh, done something with the sole to kind of fix that issue, but those boots are also really awesome. I believe they're flex too, so they're a little lighter and a little bit more flexible than this set, but Anyway, I have nothing bad to say about Crispy. Boots have lasted a long time. No failures, no leaks. They do what they say they can do. So if you're in the market for some boots, I don't think Crispy would, would disappoint you. All right, jumping into rifle. This is the Stealthy Hunter, which I'm sure you guys know who he is, Ryan Lampers. I've had this rifle cover for three years. Personally love it. I don't run the back piece of it. I, I've left that off since day one just the scope cover and the muzzle cover, built-in handle, which is nice when you're moving in on a, on a stock if you drop your backpack. And then just two clips here, pops right off. Done deal. Lightweight, durable, it's a great uh, rifle cover. And then this is a 7PRC. It's the Christensen Ridgeline FFT with a Vortex LHT four and a half by 22 by 50 scope. And then um, I just recently, last week, threw this gun in the XLR chassis, which you can see here. Honestly, the main reason why I bought this chassis, as silly as this might sound, 
is for the foldable stock. I love this feature. It allows my rifle to obviously be short and compact on my backpack. So my barrel's not sticking way up over my head while I'm hiking through the timber or a drainage or whatnot. Um, there was a little bit of a weight penalty. The stock that came with this gun was a little bit lighter, but I was willing to sacrifice a few ounces for this foldable stock. It's got a carbon grip, mag came with it, and then I have my Spartan bipod adapter up front that I've had for several years. I just kind of bounce this, um, this bipod around from gun to gun to gun. So this is the weapon I'll be bringing for this trip and we're gonna be sharing a gun. So hopefully uh, it doesn't let my buddies down, but yep, there it is. Again, Christensen Ridgeline FFT, chambered in seven PRC and the XLR 4.0 chassis and OD green with the foldable stock option. All right guys, next I'm kind of jumping into clothing here. I'm not gonna do this in any specific order, just kind of grabbing things as I go through it. So socks, uh, I've been wearing the darn tough socks for several years. Um, they're my, my favorite. They just hold up, they don't, no holes, they're durable, they dry really fast and uh, they're comfortable. So darn tough socks, I'll continue wearing those. T-shirt, this is a First Light Arrow Wool 150, just a large T-shirt. I've had this for like four years. I wear this on most of my hunts. It's stretchy, dries really fast, and it's just comfortable. Um, underwear, these are my all-time favorite underwear. Might sound silly, but these are the Saks, um, long boxer briefs. They're my personal favorite. These are the only underwear that I've ever found personally that um, don't ride up and give me a wedgie when I'm hiking. Might be TMI for you guys, but it uh, drives me nuts when I'm hiking. So um, to me, those are worth the money. Uh, base layer wise, this is the Sika Core lightweight hoodie. Obviously comes with a hood. It's really thin, synthetic piece. It's got a chest zip and then one little side pocket here. Uh, I've been wearing the Sika stuff for shoot five or six years now at least a lot of people talk crap about sitka i'm not sure why all the stuff i have of theirs has been bomb proof no holes no tears super comfortable and it's durable in my experience anyway um and then following that is the sitka core heavyweight hoodie it's literally the same exact piece just heavier weight i'll go over the top of that lightweight one with uh, that as another layer and then this is just a Sika puffy vest, synthetic. Uh, it's an extra large. I'm six foot two, 200 pounds. So this size fits me well. I've had all these Sika pieces again for several years and no holes, no tears. And if you watch my uh, channel, I do a lot of hunting, probably 60 to 70 days a year in the, in the back country hunting out of a backpack. So in my opinion, the stuff just lasts. Uh, pants wise, these are the Stone Glacier de Havilland pants. Full side zip down the side for ventilation, which I absolutely love. Uh, the pocket placement on the front I love as well. Right above the knees, good for gloves or chew or whatever. There's plenty of space in there for your phone. Um, I love these pants. Adjustable waist, I'm sure you guys have seen that. Um, no button built-in belt. This belt doesn't slip on me at all. I have these pants and the de Havilland lights as well. I've had them for a couple years and they've been great. Um, the only downside I would say to these pants is they're kind of loud. So for like a spot and stock hunt with a bow, I probably wouldn't wear them. I'd probably wear um, some piranhas or something that's kind of stretchy and doesn't make any noise. But for rifle hunting or like archery elk, um, these pants have been great. And then for a puffy layer, this is the Stone Glacier Grumman. You can see it's kind of grungy and dirty. I've had this for a couple years. I have the, the Grumman coat and the Grumman pants. Uh, again, just great pieces. Kind of spendy, I'm not gonna lie, but buy once, cry once. This thing has kept me warm. Um, I usually will pair this like with my quilt and uh, be able to keep my sli sleeping system kind of light if I want to on some trips paired with this jacket and that's worked really well for me. So um, 
that kind of cuts it for clothes. Didn't want to spend too much time on that. Everybody has their own, their own kind of system that works for them. This is what works for me. I'm going to stick with that. All right, let's talk about a uh, sleeping system next. So this is my pad. This is the Big Agnes Q-Core SLX. I've had this pad for f five, maybe six years now, and it's been awesome for me. Um, no leaks, no holes. It's held up. I do pair it with a ground cloth because I, I sleep in the Seek Outside Cimarron most of the time. Uh, floorless shelter. So this paired with a ground cloth, you can pick up for like 12 bucks has been a great pad for me. I also have the Thermarest uh, Neo Air X Lite. That pad has been a great pad as well, but that pad kind of sounds like you're sleeping on a bag of potato chips. It's, it's, it's pretty loud. It is a little lighter than this pad, but I'm willing to uh, carry a little extra weight for comfort. So in my opinion, this pad is more comfortable and it doesn't sound like you're sleeping on a bag of potato chips. So to me, it's worth the extra weight. Um, this is just a compression sack from Sea to Summit. Inside this compression sack, I have my sleeping bag, my ground cloth, and my pillow. So this is just a Seek Outside ground cloth. It folds out to about, I don't know, about, I wanna say it's like seven feet by like 30 inches wide, something like that. It's plenty big enough for my pad and there's a little extra space on uh, all sides around it. And then this is a Sea to Summit pillow. I think this is the extra large in size. Um, one tip when you air these things up, don't air it up all the way. Let's say go to like 75%. It'll stay in your sleeping bag if you don't air it up all the way. It'll, at least it helps keep it in your sleeping bag. If you air it up all the way, it seems to kind of pop out and end up on the ground in the middle of the night. So that's one thing I found that seems to kind of keep it in place. And then sleeping bag. I have a couple bags. Um, my wife and I do a lot of hiking and, and uh, overnight kind of camp trips and then my daughter started to get into hunting now so I've accumulated a few extra pieces but this is the first bag I ever bought. Uh, this is the this is a big Agnes bag it's called the Anvil Horn it's a 15 degree bag. Um, the only thing about it I guess that would stand out compared to other bags and it's my favorite feature is on the back side here there's a sleeve for your sleeping pad to slide into. And then there's two sewn in notches. You can maybe use a piece of paracord, that's what I do anyway, to tie it across. And that keeps your sleeping pad underneath you all night. Um, with my other bags, I find myself kind of, I move around a lot when I sleep from on my stomach to my side and just kind of shifting around all night. So without this netting, I end up off my pad all the time. So. To me, it's a, it's a simple feature. You know, you might not think much of it, but I love securing my pad in this. And then this is a 15 degree bag. I've had it for several years. You see, I've got some burn holes in it from the fire. Um, just stitched those up with dental floss and thrown some tenacious tape over them and still as good as new. So yeah, I just cram it into this stuff sack with those uh, other couple pieces and uh, that kind of narrows down my my sleeping kit. I'm not going to go into my shelters. I've got some separate videos about those. On this uh, trip, I'm bringing my Seek Outside Cimarron and the Dyneema fabric. It's like 17 ounces. It's great for two guys. And then I'm bringing the Seek Outside medium stove with a little silky saw. Um, again, I've done some separate videos on those shelters. So you can check those out on my channel if you want. But yeah, that kind of rounds out my sleeping kit. And we'll move on to the next items. All right, guys, let's talk water filtration. So uh, all the years in the past, I've used the Katadyne B-Free water filter, which is uh, just a little filter that screws into the top of your dirty bag. Um, I just kind of got sick of using that thing, to be honest with you. Squeezing and squeezing and squeezing just kind of gets old and it does take a little while. And that uh, B-Free filter does have the tendency to freeze and break in low temps. So if you don't remember to like put it in your sleeping bag at night, it can, it can be problems the next day. Uh, I mean, honestly, it worked pretty well, but my buddy Joseph picked up a SteriPen last year before our spring bear hunt, and this thing worked really well. Uh, it treats a liter of water in, I wanna say like 90 seconds. You literally just scoop, fill your Nalgene up, and then stir this thing around for whatever it is, 60 to 90 seconds. Your water is ready to drink. Um, 
And then I'm gonna carry, I got the uh, platypus two liter bags. They're dirty bags for me. I can carry, I got three of those, so six liters plus this Sawyer. This is another liter, seven ounces of dirty water plus my 32 ounce Nalgene. I'll fill these up at a creek and then pour them into my Nalgene and treat it as needed. To me, this is just simple, it's easy, it works well. Um, they do sell a rechargeable one. I, I didn't buy that one, this one just takes batteries. So I'll bring the four lithium batteries that are in, in this, they're fresh and brand new. And then I'll bring four additional batteries for a 10 day trip just in case. But uh, the ones in here should last the entire trip with no problem. I don't know, it's just simple. I like the way it works. I mean, the one downside is if you're struggling to find water and you're having to scoop out of you know some low streams or puddles, you're gonna end up with a lot of silt and sand in your, in your water bottle. In that case, you'd probably be better off taking a pump or some sort of squeeze filter. But um, spring bear hunt, as you guys know, there's gonna be plenty of water around, so that won't be an issue on this trip. And that's why I'm gonna bring this uh, steri pen on this one. All right, next here I have my kill kit. So these are the Graxaw game bags. These are the mule deer bone out game bags. And then I carry a, this is a marsupial ground cloth. I've had this for a couple of years now, I think three years. Um, this thing is awesome. You can peel the quarters off of an elk or a deer or a bear. It folds out to about the size of this table. So I think it's what about 30 by 42 inches, something like that. Plenty of room to lay a hindquarter on, debone the meat, keep it nice and clean, throw it in your game bags, and then off you go. So this thing's ultra light. Picked it up off Marsupial's website. I think it was like, I don't know, 20 bucks, somewhere in that ballpark. I can't remember, I've had it for a while. But yeah, I usually just use this. And then when I get home, rinse it off, run it through the washer machine on cold, and then hang dry it. Um, these game bags are ultra light, bright orange, easy to see, plenty big enough for mule deer, deboned. Um, I think there's six of them in here. This thing's about the size of a softball. So I love these game bags just because they're really lightweight and we're carrying a bunch of stuff in our packs with camera gear and rafts on this trip. So um, just trying to save weight anywhere I can. You know, a lot of this gear I've accumulated over several years. Um, it's super expensive, obviously, if any of you guys are into this stuff. So just kind of chip away at a couple things a year and uh, I kind of finally feel like I have everything I need. So yeah, those are the game bags I like to use. And then as far as a knife goes, uh, this is the Ibex Mini, or excuse me, no, this is the Capra Hunter. Um, this is a goat knife interchangeable blade. It uses the uh, 60A blades. Extremely light. Love this knife. Um, I've had this for three years as well. Works really well. I'm a fan of just, just changing the blade out when it's dull, not trying to resharpen it in the field. These are, again, really light, cheap to replace. Um, they are extremely sharp, so you want to be careful with them. You'll slice yourself wide open if you make a mistake. So you definitely want to be uh, thinking about what you're doing when you're using those blades, but I think this thing is like an ounce and a half or something. It's really, really light. And then of course my tags, they always go in there. Um, Luco tape, this is uh, this stuff's a game changer. Works well for cuts, um, blisters on your feet. This stuff is so sticky. I have no idea what they have on this, this tape, but it will stick to your feet for days and days and days. So if you have any hot spots or any wounds, this stuff works really well. I take this on every hunt. Luco tape, and then just a few pairs of gloves, mechanic gloves, just to try to keep my hands somewhat clean. Obviously you're back there for a long time. You're eating food, um, going to the bathroom, all that sort of stuff. So try to keep my hands somewhat clean. And that pretty much wraps up my kill kit. Set that off to the side. For a headlamp, I've had this Peaks Duo headlamp for a couple years now. Um, I like the rechargeable lamp because I carry a solar panel to recharge my battery banks, my phone, my headlamp, my uh, Garmin InReach Mini. This headlamp is super bright. It's red and white. I think it's like a thousand lumens on the brightest setting and the battery lasts a long time when it's fully charged. One thing I do when I do store it though in my backpack, 
I unscrew the, the battery side a little bit just to make sure that it accidentally doesn't power on in my backpack. But other than that, um, it's awesome. You can wear it on either side, up or down. It articulates either direction, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, simple function. You don't have to have a degree to figure out how to make this thing work. Some of those headlamps have so many options, it drives me nuts. But simple, effective, and really bright. And then this is just kind of like my camp bag that'll be in the lid of my backpack. I usually take the lid off at night and bring it in the tent with me. And then this will just have some random stuff in it. You know, pyro putty, stuff works really well to start a fire, toothbrush. And then I got, you know, a few extra batteries, two lighters, just to make, just in case one get, you know, goes out on me or whatnot. Um, let's see what else do I have on here, in here, toothpaste. And then uh, I do bring a spare headlamp just in case that thing fails for whatever reason. A couple years ago, had a headlamp um, turn on in my backpack. We killed a bull during archery season. We were packing it out at night. Headlamp, batteries were dead. Packed that bull out with an iPhone flashlight for six miles. It sucked. So anyway this is just a cheap petzl i think it was like 30 bucks runs off three triple a's i take the batteries out of it separately in in the bag and then if i need this in an emergency i just put them in so just a backup headlamp just in case and then just a few odds and ends lens cleaner chapstick pyro putty again toothbrush toothpaste chapstick and some batteries just a kind of emergency little bag there Oh, and I got a Thermarest uh, patch in here for my sleeping pad just in case it does pop. One patch, so yeah. All right, moving on to electronics. So this is the Goal Zero Crush Light. It charges itself solar. This thing's awesome for the tent. Hang it up in the teepee. It's nice and bright. It's got a couple different settings depending on how long you want it to last. I want to say it'll last for a couple hours like three hours on full brightness and then like six or seven hours on this dim light. This thing's sweet, hence the name Crush. It's like a pancake, tiny, about the size of my hand. I think this thing was like 15 bucks. Awesome. I usually put this in my uh, tent stuff sack. And then Garmin InReach Mini, I've had this thing forever, works really well. I haven't tried any of the other ones, so I can't really speak on those, but I've had no issues with this. Um, this is like a must have. So you definitely need a way to communicate with people without service. And then it is nice to be able to you know, text the wife and the kids and stuff while I'm gone. Talk to your buddies, let them know you killed something, whatever. So that thing comes with me on every trip. And then this is the Dark Energy Poseidon Pro, I think is what this thing's called. This will charge your iPhone two full times. And I pair it with the, the Dark Energy spectra solar panel uh, this solar panel has the ability to charge the power bank my phone my headlamp the inReach mini everything so um, huge fan of a solar panel i used to just carry like four of these power bank things but they're kind of heavy so the solar panel has been awesome um, one nice thing about the dyneema shelter is the sunlight will get through that shelter so you can kind of leave this back at camp charge your uh, power bank and then when you come back at night, plug your phone in, plug your um, headlamp in, whatever you need to charge, and just kind of repeat that process as the days go by. And it seems to work really well for me. So yeah, again, this is the Dark Energy Spectra solar panel, the Dark Energy power bank, Garmin InReach Mini, and then the Goal Zero Crush tent light. All right, let's talk about optics. So these, this is a new piece for me. Um, I recently sold my drift boat and reinvested my money into some new glass. I had some Vortex Vipers for like 10 plus years. Uh, I've always wanted some new glass, but it's so dang expensive. So um, timing worked out, sold the drift boat and I bought some Swarovski binos and this little spotter here. This is the 17 by 40 on the Tricer uh, B BC tripod and then the Tricer LP pan head. The tripod and the pan head together are two pounds, super lightweight. 
And then the spotter again is, as you can tell, really small, compact, lightweight, and it's paired with the MagView adapter for digiscoping. Simply magnet on the back of your phone, open the MagView adapter on your spotter, and this thing just, boom, drops right on. It's my favorite digiscoping adapter. I'm not a huge fan of a big extra case on your phone. Um, you simply just throw a magnet on and boom, it's, it's on there. So awesome setup. Really looking forward to putting this thing to the test uh, in a couple days here. I mean, I use it at the range today and it's just crystal clear. So yeah, again, that's the Swarovski 17 by 40 Tricer BC tripod which works best for sitting down or maybe kneeling. Um, I think the AD is the one that gets up tall enough to stand with, but I went with the BC because a lot of the hunts we do are backpack hunts, so I wanted to save a little bit of weight. And then I've had this rangefinder for quite a while now. Uh, I wanna say three, maybe four years. This is the Vortex 4000. Um, for me, it's, it's great. I think it's like 400 bucks. They have some fancier ones out there that calculate your ballistics and do all that stuff for you. I might upgrade to one of those someday, but the Vortex 4000 has worked well for me. It ranges plenty far enough for my capabilities of shooting anyway. And uh, yeah, it hasn't let me down. So that's the Vortex 4000. And then for binoculars, this is probably the thing I'm the most excited about. Uh, these are the 12 by 42 NL piers from Swarovski in the Stone Glacier Skyline Bino Harness. I've had the harness for quite a while now. Um, I like the Skyline because it's just simple. It doesn't have a bunch of extra pockets and crap I don't need. Sleek design, adjustable on the front with the Velcro for different size binoculars. I had my 10 by 42 Vipers in there before I bought these 12 by 42s and the same Bino Harness works well. So anyway, these are the Swarovski 12 by 42s. I haven't put them to the test yet because I just got them, but I'm sure they're going to work really well and I'm excited to test them out. All right, guys, one more new piece for me this year is my alpaca raft. I picked this thing up like two months ago. Um, Joseph, my buddy, he had one of these last year on our spring bear hunt. Uh, the reason why I bought one was this year we plan on rafting uh, quite a bit of river. So I picked up, this is the caribou. And then these are the Aquabound Whiskey paddle that you can pick up from Alpaca Raft as well. Um, it simply just clicks together like a center pole of a Seek Outside Shelter. Um, I'm not going to blow this up in this video. I might do an in-depth review on this later on after I get a chance to use it. I've done a couple test runs with it just to get a feel for it. I went with the self-belling model um, because you're going to take water on. It's inevitable. And I don't want all my gear getting wet. So... Um, I also think it's personally safer for us with a self bailing model because you can take water on and it's not going to sink your raft. Um, I just kind of learned that from Rowan Rivers in my drift boat. So this paired with a, a really light kind of cheap pair of waders is what I'm going to use. I think they're called Chodas. Picked them up for like 80 bucks. Um, this raft and the uh, oars total is like six and a half pounds in weight. So I'll put this kind of underneath my lid um, until we get where we're going. And then the beauty of this caribou raft is once it's, once you get it laid out, there's a zipper, you can put all your gear in the tube of the raft, close it, and then you air it up and all your gear is in the tubes. So it's completely waterproof. It's not going to get wet, not going to get beat up. We're going to, we're going to row down river, you know, pick a spot, get out, leave most of our gear down low, put a couple days of food in our packs go up the mountain, hunt a couple drainages for a few, three, four days, whatever it is, hopefully kill a bear, come back down, load the rafts back up, work our way downstream, and then kind of just repeat the process and just keep checking country out as we work our way down the canyon. So um, I can't speak much about this thing because I haven't used it that much, but from what I can tell um, from, from last year, it's, it was an awesome raft and uh, I'm hoping to get to use it quite a bit this year. So yeah, maybe I'll do a separate video on this after I beat it up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna completely load my pack with all my gear, all my food, everything that I'm gonna use on this trip um, and get you a total pack weight for 10 days. It's gonna be everything except water. So we're gonna be within probably three or four pounds 
of uh, pack weight going in. So yeah, I'll get this thing loaded up and let you guys know what it weighs. All right, guys, as you can see, pack is loaded. Um, it's heavy. It's like 76 pounds. That's with 10 days of food, pack craft, everything in here, and a liter of water, uh, rifle on the side, everything. Um, it's pretty dang heavy. But the good thing is I'm going to be able to leave a lot of this weight down in the drainage and pack in probably around 50 pounds when I'm actually in the drainage is hunting somewhere in there. Um, that's kind of the pros and cons of having a raft and having all this camera gear is the weight definitely adds up quick, but it is what it is. So anyway, that kind of concludes what I was planning on doing. Hope you guys found this useful. I tried to be short and sweet and kind of straight to the point. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.